Anna Cassify Perkins is indeed an excellent choice to present the Grace Candy Foundation's 2013 lecture, which uses as its springboard the lecture presented in 1992 by Reverend Dr. Burchell Taylor, just about the time she herself became involved in the study of theology. In 1996, she received her Master of Philosophy in Theology from the University of Cambridge, and in, 19, in 2004, her PhD in Theological Ethics from Boston College. Dr. Perkins is certainly one of the few academics, and per, perhaps only theologian, that has attempted to understand Jamaican female sexuality in dance hall through her exploration of that musical genre and her in-depth analysis of the lyrics of one of the genre's top female artists, Tanya Stevens. A champion of gender studies, Dr. Perkins has explored many other aspects of the lives of women within our culture, including unbridled childbearing, economic inequality, and cultural taboos against women, among others. And in her quest to illuminate the problems that must be surmounted to create a more harmonious relationship between the sexes and a generally more equitable society. Neither has she shied away from delving into the political arena, having chosen to explore perhaps the most controversial period and the most controversial politician, Michael Manley. According to Dr. Rosane Walker, in a review of her book, Manley's Politics and Catholic Social Teachings, Dr. Perkins makes a unique contribution to the nascent field of Caribbean political theology. Dr. Perkins' wide range of interests and sense of social responsibility is equally reflected in her public service activities as in her prolific writings. She has served as a member of various committees involved in the planning of theological conferences, Catholic, ecumenical, in association with the World Council of Churches and the Caribbean Council of Churches. She has also hosted a variety of radio programs religious as well as secular, and is a regular contributor to the nation's major newspapers. Dr. Perkins has also served as a mentor with Jamaica AIDS support. Anna is the former Dean of Studies at St. Michael's Theological College in Kingston, Jamaica. She's currently a research fellow for the UWI Ethics Center Initiative and the Senior Programs Officer Quality Assurance Unit. Board of Undergraduate Studies at the University of the West Indies in Mona, Jamaica. The breadth and depth of her study of the numerous moral and ethical issues which are interwoven in the tapestry of Jamaica's social fabric makes Anna Perkins an outstanding choice to present this evening's lecture. Please join me in welcoming to the lectern Dr. Anna Cassify Perkins. Thank you so much, Mrs. McIntosh, for that lovely introduction. Oftentimes I hear myself introduced and I don't recognize me. <laughs> Thank you again. Good afternoon, everyone. Of course, to be invited to deliver a lecture of this stature is a great, great honor. And I'm truly honored to be here. Much better, thank you. And of course, preparing a lecture of this sort is, you know, it's a labor of personal love and passion and an opportunity to really share with a wider audience some of the research that I've been doing for a long time. But I recognize at the same time that this is not just a personal labor, but that I've actually done this in concert with lots of people, you know, this is really also a social activity where I find myself standing on the shoulders of many persons. So I beg you to indulge me just for a couple of minutes as I acknowledge and recognize some of the people whose support and guidance made this lecture possible. 
Of course, without the Grace Kennedy Foundation's uh, commitment to Jamaica, commitment to conversation and dialogue, a lecture of this sort would not be uh, possible. So I have to thank them for their kind invitation. Thanks to, to Chair Professor Elsa Liorani and the members of the lecture committee for their support during the time of preparing from starting out with title all the way down to discussing content. I have to say a very, very special thanks to Caroline Mafood. She's the exec director of the foundation. And Caroline was so wonderful and professional, but also very caring in the support that she has given me throughout this process. Thanks to, to Charmaine McKenzie, the editor for the book itself. She helped to make it a lot more readable. Those of you who know what my writing is like know that Charmaine had a lot of work to do to make that work very, very well. There are also a couple of children here, about seven children we are going to get to meet in a little while, who I have to say special thanks to because they were brave enough to share, share with me their vision of Jamaica and also their experience of what Jamaica is like presently. And I'll tell you about that in a short while. Of course, I come from a family, as many of you do, so I have to say thanks to my family. And they are here, my parents, Sarah and Herman Perkins, my sister, Antoinette, and I believe my other sister, Andrea, is somewhere in the audience. Both my brothers were not able to be here this afternoon, but without my family, of course, this would just not have been possible. And I have a couple of really special friends whose love and support throughout the years, and particularly with this particular piece of um, work, have been invaluable. Dr. Rohan Lewis from the University of Technology, Mr. Noel Wilkins, the Reverend Vivette Jennings, and of course, my good old sparring partner, Dr. Patrick Dallas. I too have a work family. I work family at UWI, and so many of my colleagues and friends from UWI have turned up here this afternoon to support me especially my colleagues from the Board for Undergraduate Studies, the Office of the Board for Undergraduate Studies, uh, who, you know, have to put up with my loud laugh and of key singing as I try to focus and get my thoughts down on paper. A very, very, very special thanks to my friend and colleague, June Weekly, that's there about there rolling her eyes. But without June to keep me focused, I think a lot of times I go off the rails. So June, thank you so much. I really, really do appreciate that. And of course, I have a family at St. Michael's Theological College and certainly the family of the wider Roman Catholic Church community here in Jamaica who have always been a tower of support in all the work that I do. And I have to acknowledge that I'm standing on a particular set of shoulders, the shoulders of the Reverend Dr. Birchell Taylor, who delivered the lecture in 1992, but who could not be here with us tonight. And I gratefully acknowledge his work as a leader and mentor of many of us younger theologians, and of course, you, my friends, the audience, who have come here tonight because of your interest in what's happening in Jamaica and your desire for us to open up and continue a dialogue about how we could improve the, the way we have been living with each other. Thank you so much for being here, and I look forward to sharing my thoughts with you in a very, very short while. But to begin, I'd like to offer you a little treat. Now, Mrs. Mack did tell you a little bit about some of the research that I've done and the interest that I have in dancehall music and particularly the work of Tanya Stevens, who I've looked at uh, quite extensively. And in an earlier version of this lecture, when I was putting it together, I had in my title this whole notion of what are called malleable morals. The idea being that, uh, you know, we can change wrong or right to suit ourselves. And the idea of malleable morals actually came out of a song that Tanya Stevens has on her infallible album called Introspection. So I'd like to invite her to come up and do that piece for us, sort of to kick off our reflection this afternoon on morality and moral disease in Jamaica. Tanya? Or good evening. I'm not sure what time it is. <laughs> kind of half asleep. So I'm going to try to wake up halfway through this, and I, and I hope I, I deliver it well. I've seen you bite the hands that feed you, then cry on the shoulders they're attached to. Scoff when we say don't jump, and then get mad when we don't catch you. Act up in act one, and then get, and then, whoa, you fall asleep from here, right? <laughs> Can I start again? <laughs> Okay. 
Thank you very much. I'm so happy. You know it better than I do. And then get. <laughs> no, I'm really half asleep. I haven't slept in about 48 hours. So I'm, I'm running on empty. So give me the light back. Breakdown. It was breakdown that I forget because I'm breaking down. So I've seen you bite the hands that feed you, then cry on the shoulders they're attached to. Scoff when we say don't jump, but then get mad when we don't catch you. Act up in act one and then break down by the end of act two. And the ones you spurn are often the ones that you run back to. But many of us are stubborn. And so even when we bleed, we'll never admit we need the very ones we really need. We'd rather suffer in silence, grin, bear the pain, than admit we made a mistake and we'd like to try again. See, that's the human condition. Mess up repeatedly and still show no contrition. And if it's bad enough, just blame it on Lucifer. Use him for the excuse you didn't act of your own volition. Go ahead, rob, cheat, lie. Remember, Satan is the perfect alibi. And all you have to do is repent before you die. You'll still be accepted at that mansion in the sky. Fret not thyself that thy morals be malleable. For that is what makes you infallible. Thank you very much.